Hello and welcome to the BA Knowledge Share. In this episode, I cover the second task in the Plan Business Analysis uh, Monitoring and Approach Chapter 3 of the BayBalk Guide. The task covers stakeholder engagement approach and building that. So without further ado, let's get started. So the purpose of a plan hold uh, stakeholder engagement is to plan an approach for establishing and maintaining effective working relationships with stakeholders. The plan stakeholder engagement involves conducting a thorough stakeholder analysis to identify all of the involved stakeholders and analyze their characteristics. This is an important step in any sort of effort. It's important to understand who your stakeholders are, what their attributes or characteristics are, and how best to collaborate with these stakeholders. The results of the analysis are then utilized to define the best collaboration and communication approaches for the initiative and appropriately plan for stakeholder risks. When planning for stakeholder engagement, the degree of complexity can increase disproportionately as the number of stakeholders involved in the business analysis activities increases. This is important because new or different techniques for management of stakeholders may be required when the engagement moves from collaborating with a few stakeholders into dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of people. So the complexity increases with the number of stakeholders. You could have a huge project where you have N number of stakeholders. In that case, it becomes important to really understand roles and responsibilities of stakeholders who is the actual SME, meaning the subject matter expert, versus who is the sponsor, versus who is the decision maker, and who provides sign-off. So it kind of becomes important to go through this exercise as the number of uh, stakeholders increase and the complexity of the effort increases as well. A couple of elements um, in, in this task is, um, is, number one is to perform stakeholder analysis which involves identifying the stakeholders who will be directly or indirectly impacted by the change. I do have a stakeholder matrix template on my website at baknowledgeshare.com that you can reference in order to do your stakeholder analysis if you ever wanted to download that. Um, it's also important to analyze uh, the information once collected. So as mentioned, um, I do have a stakeholder matrix on beknowledgeshare.com, which is a template, which will really break down the information that you need in order to understand who your stakeholders are. And once you collect that information, it becomes important to kind of sit down and analyze and see, okay, does stakeholder A me, does he represent a domain SME? Uh, does stakeholder B represent the sponsor? Could the sponsor and the SME overlap? So those are the sorts of questions you want to ask yourself. Now, as you go through this exercise again and again for every project, it becomes a lot easier and you'll see similar sort of traits within the stakeholders um, as well. Stakeholder analysis is performed repeatedly as business analysis activities continue. A thorough and detailed stakeholder list ensures that stakeholders are not overlooked. Understanding who the stakeholders are, the impact of proposed changes on them, and the influence they may have on the change is vital to understand what needs, wants, and expectations must be satisfied by a business analyst. Um, so a couple of things to consider when doing this analysis is roles, right? So business analysts identify stakeholder roles in order to understand where and how stakeholders will contribute to the initiative. Goes back to my initial uh, point around uh, whether a stakeholder is a SME, whether they're actually called a sponsor, but they're really a subject matter expert and they are a sponsor as well. So those are the sorts of things you wanna consider. Attitudes. Stakeholder attitudes can positively or negatively impact the change. Business analysts identify stakeholder attitudes in order to fully understand what may impact a stakeholder's actions and behaviors. Knowing how a stakeholder perceives the initiative allows an opportunity for the business analyst to specifically plan their collaboration and engagement with that stakeholder. Business analysts analyze stakeholder attitudes about the business goals, business analysis in general, level of interest in the change, the sponsor, team members, and other stakeholders, and collaboration and team-based approach. So each stakeholder is unique, and you want to understand, well, how is their attitude towards the project in general? As an example, if their attitude is more like, hey, you know, 
we're doing this because we're told to do this. Um, you want to you want to be aware of that. And in that case, you would kind of switch over and kind of be more of a coach. Um, if if they are another example is if they are new uh, to this whole project management effort, if they've been running um, their own sort of um, uh, projects on their own and are hesitant to utilize your services as a business analyst or even as a within the project management world, it becomes important to wear the coaching hat where you educate them and try to move the project forward. So those are the sorts of um, things you want to consider. The other part of it is decision-making authority. Business analysts identify the authority level a stakeholder possesses over business analysis activities, deliverables, and changes to business analysis work. And then the level of power or influence, meaning what sort of influence does the stakeholder hold? You may have a domain subject matter expert who is who knows the the maybe the the tool in and out and can give you requirements, and their level of power or influence is high because they understand all the, the nuances of the system as well as understand the business side of things. So in that case, maybe the sponsor would rely on this individual before sign off. So those are the sorts of things that you want to uh, be wary of and keep uh, revisiting the stakeholder uh, and keep doing that stakeholder analysis as you move on the project. Because sometimes projects run many years and in that case, stakeholders shift and then there's a change as well. The second part in the elements within the stakeholder analysis is defined stakeholder collaboration. So you may want to identify uh, things that would impact collaboration. A very good example is um, we all went remote during COVID and some of us are still remote, some are not. So in that case, you wanna understand, well, what is the best approach to gather these requirements? If you are offshore, well, how do you kind of adjust the timing? How do you set those expectations with your stakeholders up front? And what sort of preferences do the stakeholders have um, to work through these sort of elicitation sessions and requirements um, efforts. So keep that in mind when you are uh, determining your uh, stakeholder uh, engagement approach. The next one is stakeholder communication needs. That's important because you wanna be able to understand well, what works for the stakeholders. Are they currently using maybe a certain uh, collaboration tool like Slack where, which is, they're currently using, which would just make sense to uh, for them to continue using for questions and answers that don't require a face-to-face uh, -face meeting. The other part of it could be, well, how do you communicate status to them, right? So is it an, via email? Is it via uh, working with a project manager to say, hey, you know, can you include the statuses in your weekly report out so there's not too much of communication going on so people are confused? Um, so those are the sorts of level of communications you want to uh, iron out initially. So we went through three elements within the stakeholder engagement approach. Now you have guidelines and tools. A couple of guidelines and tools that you want to consider is business analysis performance assessment, which provides the results of previous assessments that should be reviewed and incorporated. So a good example could be you're on a project right now, and the project ties back to another effort that you may have worked on before. And it's a similar sort of um, effort where you have op maybe operations that you're working with within the business and um, you've worked with these subject matter experts, sponsors, regulators before. And so therefore you kind of use that effort as your guiding or your baseline um, in order to build the stakeholder engagement approach. Change strategy. This is used for improved assessment of stakeholder impact and the development of more effective stakeholder engagement strategies. And the, the current state description provides the context within which the work needs to be completed. This information will lead to more effective stakeholder analysis and better understanding of the impact of the desired change. So any uh, sort of current state description could be found in a, like a project charter or project scope document, or if it's agile, then maybe like a business case document where you get a good understanding of what are they currently doing. If that is not readily available, it'd be nice to kind of get that information from someone that understands the current state 
you don't have to get too much into detail, but just enough so that you can build a stakeholder engagement approach. A couple of techniques used in this is brainstorming um, is number one, which is used to produce stakeholder lists and identify stakeholder roles and responsibilities. The business rules analysis used to identify stakeholders who are the source of the business rules. Document analysis used to review existing organizational assets that might assist in planning stakeholder um, engagement. So the document analysis could be some sort of repository where they're saving some sort of operations workflow. Um, so those are the sorts of things you want to initially do, um, maybe as part of your current state analysis to determine, hey, you know, this is the, these are the sorts of roles that are doing this sort of operation. So the document analysis would help you determine more of a current state, what are they currently doing? Interviews used to interact with specific stakeholders to gain more information or knowledge about stakeholder groups. Lessons learned used to identify an enterprise's previous experience with planning stakeholder engagement. Mind mapping used to identify potential stakeholders and help understand the relationships between them. Organizational modeling used to determine if the organizational units or people listed have any unique needs and interests that have that should be considered. Organizational models describe the roles and functions in the organization and the ways in which stakeholders interact, which can help to identify stakeholders who will be affected by a change. So it's really understanding what the organizational structure or the model is and how things are, are, whether it's a matrixed organization, whether it's a flat organization, so good to get a sense of how it's structured. Process modeling used to categorize stakeholders by the systems that support their business processes. Uh, risk analysis and management used to identify risks to the initiative resulting from stakeholder attitudes or the inability of stakeholders to participate in the initiative. Scope modeling used to develop scope models to show stakeholders that fall outside the scope of the solution, but still interact with it in some way. Stakeholder list, map, or personas used to depict the relationship of stakeholders to the solution and to one another. Survey or questionnaire used to identify shared characteristics of a stakeholder group. Workshops used to interact with groups of stakeholders to gain more information about stakeholder groups. And the sum of the stakeholders involved in this uh, engagement approach of customers. Okay, so customers are a source of external stakeholders. Domain subject matter experts may help to identify stakeholders and may themselves be identified to fulfill one or more roles on the initiative. The end user is a source of the internal stakeholders. Project manager may be able to identify and recommend stakeholders responsibility for stakeholder identification and management may be shared with the business analyst. A regulator may, may require that specific stakeholder representatives or groups be involved in the business analysis activities. A sponsor may request the specific stakeholders to be involved in the business analysis activities and a supplier, a source of external stakeholders. Let's kind of boil this down into a case study. So we've, we've been working with Amanda who has been assigned to a new project to move restaurants business online. She uses a task to plan out her stakeholder engagement approach. What she needs on the project are the needs and the business analysis approach as the input. What she produces as an outcome is the stakeholder engagement approach. Amanda works to understanding who the stakeholders are, their roles, the levels of engagement, their attitude, and the decision-making authority. She discovers some interesting facts. The sponsor is relying heavily on Ben, who is a domain SME, and the customer for decisions and sign-offs. She also understands that what works best for the stakeholders in terms of scheduled meetings and how stakeholders will collaborate. She leverages information from a BA that worked on a similar effort in the past to understand stakeholder engagement. Now, she leverages BA performance assessment, the change strategy and current state description to understand the stakeholders and their needs. She uses a couple of techniques like interviews and brainstorming to build a stakeholder engagement approach. She relies on Ben, the SME, the sponsor, Tim, the PM, and the health board representative to build out the approach. There isn't a vendor involved yet. In the middle of the effort, a new stakeholder is engaged and she updates the stakeholder engagement approach. So this is in a nutshell, the whole idea behind stake building a stakeholder engagement approach 
and basically it covers task two of the um, of the uh, chapter three of the Baybal guide. Um, and thank you so much for watching this, and I do appreciate you watching these episodes. Um, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as visit our website at beknowledgeshare.com. Until next time, thank you so much and uh, see you then.